This is National 9 Morning News with Tracy Grimshaw. Good morning. Thousands of striking public service workers have brought the streets of Sydney to a standstill this morning to protest against cuts in government spending. The statewide protest is billed as one of the biggest ever in New South Wales. Braving cold winds and intermittent showers, marchers crossed the Harbour Bridge to join other demonstrators at three set meeting points. When do we want it? Right, let's go! When do we want it? Now! Flanked by hundreds of police, the protesters headed for State Parliament House. The unions are calling it a day of outrage in protest at public sector staff cutbacks and changes to workers' compensation. We want our workers' comp, we want our rights. The protest is aimed more at politicians than the public. Train and bus travellers had a fair free day. But harbour ferries have been disrupted and passengers on international flights delayed by up to two hours. Parents were advised to check their local schools for closures as thousands of teachers joined the march. Jails and power stations, ports and mines have also been affected. State Premier Nick Greiner says he's not alarmed by the numbers taking part in the march. He's refused to rule out even more public sector cuts, saying taxpayers have subsidised government inefficiencies for too long. Emma Rossi, National 9 News. Well, joining me now at Parliament House is reporter Mark Burrows. Morning, Mark. Good morning, Tracy. Having a few sound problems here. I can just hear you, but uh, go ahead. OK. Can you tell me what's the situation there now? <laughs> Tracy, <laughs> Tens to We have teachers, we have builders, our rail workers and nurses all protesting about the recent number of cuts and specifically also about proposed changes to workers' compensation. Okay, Mark, I think we'll leave it there because I'm having a bit of trouble hearing you too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Victoria is also bracing itself for one of the most crippling strikes in the state's history starting at midnight tonight. It's predicted more than 700,000 workers will walk off the job and commerce and industry will be shut down by power restrictions. Talks between the state government and the Trades Hall Council last night failed to avert the stoppage over reforms to workers' compensation. Treasurer Rob Johnny says he's bitterly disappointed with the attitude of the union movement and the damaging impact the work care strike will have on people and the economy. The biggest effect will be the shutdown of public transport and power restrictions. Nearly 50,000 teachers have been called on to strike and airline services will be affected. The Trades Hall Council executive is meeting this morning but it's not likely to call off the 24-hour strike. There'll be only limited restrictions on the use of power in homes but industry and commerce will suffer severe cuts. Office equipment, heating and air conditioning will be closed down and lighting will be permitted only for security and emergencies. No power can be used for any forms of entertainment and only minimum use for hospitals, nursing homes, food premises and petrol pumps. The Australian Chamber of Manufacturers says unionists anxious over the industrial climate should resign their union membership as a signal to the Trades Hall Council that they're not happy with the strike action. Ian Neal, National 9 News. And on the eve of an expected teacher's strike in Western Australia, Perth parents are vowing to man the classrooms. Negotiations between the government and the union representing 14,000 state school teachers have broken down. A 24-hour strike is expected tomorrow over a 15% pay claim. Sacked Queensland Police Commissioner Sir Terence Lewis is expected to be officially summoned today on up to 18 charges arising from the Fitzgerald inquiry. But Sir Terence wants the charges dropped because he says the inquiry's investigations have become too politicised. Suspended as Commissioner in September 87 and sacked in April this year, Sir Terence has always protested his innocence. Last Friday, the first firm indication he'd had the chance to prove it before a jury. His lawyers were contacted by Special Prosecutor Doug Drummond, advising draft summonses were prepared. Although not charged, Sir Terence was told he could face 16 corruption charges and two of perjury. The former Commissioner refused yesterday's five o'clock deadline to be interviewed under oath by Mr Drummond, maintaining he's done nothing wrong. I've said I've been not guilty from the very beginning. I've queried many things. Uh, many things have shown to be totally incorrect as time went along in the inquiry, but I saw no mention whatsoever of any of those things that were clearly disproved uh, mentioned in the re final report that was furnished. 
In a statement last night, Mr Drummond was critical of Sir Terence going public with the news of the letter, but he refused to comment further. Sir Terence said the timing of the summonses was political. More particularly, in recent months, and it's now being used even further. Lane Kelcutt, National 9 News. A man is in a critical condition in Melbourne's Prince Henry's Hospital this morning after falling 20 floors on a building site. The accident happened just after 8 o'clock in Elizabeth Street. The man, a metal worker, was in a lift shaft when the wooden platform he was standing on collapsed. Metal workers downed tools and walked off the job. They'll meet on Thursday to discuss safety at the work site. In Adelaide, emergency services are being kept busy with a potentially disastrous chemical leak from a container ship. The vessel was on its way to New Zealand when it was diverted to Adelaide after the leak was discovered. The fully laden vessel, the New Zealand Pacific, was ordered to change course this morning. The closest port was Adelaide's outer harbour and it docked here a short time ago. Firefighters have now lifted the hatch and are trying to determine the location of the chemical leak with special gas meters. The vessel is carrying containers of calcium carbide below decks and that produces a highly toxic gas when the chemical comes in contact with water. All emergency services are on standby at dockside and will remain there until the all clear is given. Ray McGee, National 9 News. In Sydney, a tugboat is battling high seas and strong winds to free a beach tanker loaded with 300 tonnes of diesel oil. Although there are no leaks, the bulk liquid carrier Chorus damaged its rudder when it ran aground on a sandbank at Cronulla Beach, south of the city. Several helicopters are on standby to evacuate the German crew, if necessary. When we return, India's opposition resigns en masse over an alleged arms scandal and flash flooding claims a young skateboarder's life. Comparable hits of Guy Mitchell. Put them together with the classic tracks of Frankie Lane, and you've got a great album. The very best of Frankie Lane and Guy Mitchell. 20 solid gold favorites like Rawhide, Jezebel, Cool Water. The very best of Frankie Lane and Guy Mitchell. 20 classics together for the very first time. My Truly Truly Fair, the Roven kind. I love my truly fair. Remember these Frankie Lane classics? Seek me, oh my darling. Of course you do. On this our wedding day. The very best of Sparrow Guy Mitchell the tree tops, and the tree Frankie tops, Lane. Twenty unforgettable you hits from J and B. It's that time of the year again, and it seems that everyone has the common cold. To Carolyn and Lindsay Monaghan, your cold is anything but common. Monaghan's can help you make the right choice to relieve your family from coughs and colds. It could mean the difference between suffering for weeks or getting back into action quickly. For value, professional advice and friendly service, see the team at Monaghan's Pharmacy. They'll help your family back into health. Monaghan's Pharmacy, 140 Ferry Street, Warrnambool, open seven days a week. The federal government is getting closer to a final decision on Australia's biggest ever defence contract, the $5 billion Anzac Frigate Project. The Anzac Project is big business and big politics. New South Wales and Victoria have been locked in a grim battle to win the contract. Twelve state-of-the-art warships are to be built, most of them for the Royal Australian Navy, with between two and four ships being sold to New Zealand. In New South Wales, a consortium based on the Newcastle State Dockyard has been pushing the merits of a Dutch-designed frigate. The other contender is based at Melbourne's Williamstown Naval Dockyard and it's been advocating a West German warship. Latest indications are that the Defence Department is strongly in favour of the Victorian submission. It proposes building seven ships at Williamstown and five at Newcastle. More than 7,000 jobs would be created, most of them in New South Wales and Victoria, 
the rest at ancillary workshops in South Australia. Defence Minister Kim Beasley is due to receive the department's recommendation this week, with a final cabinet decision expected in the middle of next month. This report in today's Melbourne Age newspaper says the battle is all but over. Castle and New South Wales generally. A spokesman for Defence Minister Kim Beasley says Mr Beasley has no comment, but then goes on to point out that the final decision on who gets the contract is still very much a matter for Cabinet. Peter Harvey, Canberra. The Prices Surveillance Authority has begun a three-day national inquiry into petrol prices. The inquiry in Melbourne is to investigate why pump prices vary as much as 10 cents a litre without warning. It's the first PSA inquiry in five years, and members will also investigate Australia's consumer costs in relation to world prices. Oil companies are expected to propose more predictable methods for setting maximum wholesale prices. A diplomat suspected of smuggling drugs into Australia and Europe has been arrested in Portugal carrying 91 kilograms of cocaine worth almost $98 million. The 48-year-old Maldive Islands diplomat was picked up during an undercover operation by British police and customs officers. Tonight, drugs officers are jubilant, not just with the sheer size of this haul, 91 kilos packed into three suitcases, but with the arrest of the man allegedly smuggling it. He's been named as Amin Didi Setin, age 48, and claims to be a Maldives Island diplomat, sometimes working for the UN. Setin is certainly well known in Colombia, where he's been linked to the powerful drug smuggling cartels based in Medellin. Agents believe he has been smuggling huge quantities out of Colombia for several years, chiefly to Northern Europe and Australia. One officer who knows Satan's South American connections said he believes Satan alone had been responsible for opening up huge areas of the cocaine market. It was at Faro Airport that the man from the Maldives was finally arrested. Officers from Portugal and Britain had been trailing him for a month. They struck as he tried to check the suitcases through. The cocaine they found is understood to be of the highest purity and is one of the biggest seizures of cocaine destined for the UK. A dramatic rescue bid in New Mexico has ended in tragedy with one boy dead and 11 others injured. The teenager and his brother had been skateboarding in a dried up canal when a flash flood washed them away. 14-year-old David Alvarado and policeman John Bodie cling desperately to a lifeline strung across the swollen canal. Bodie had jumped into the water to try and save David and his 17-year-old brother who'd been skateboarding in the canal before a thunderstorm brought the raging torrent. Bodie was the first to be dragged to safety. I just started screaming to, to keep conscious just for myself. And I, I just told myself I was going to live and that's what I was trying to do. The water battered the teenager relentlessly. His grip weakened with tiredness until floating debris hit him, knocking him away from the safety line. Dozens of rescuers and passers-by tried to help. Many jumped into the shallow waters and ended up being rescued themselves. In all, ten people were injured trying to save the two boys. <laughs> David Alvarado was eventually hauled to safety, numb and in shock, and eight kilometres downstream. His brother's body was later recovered 20 kilometres from where the tide first struck them. In the United States, Jane Phelan, National 9 News. Striking Soviet coal miners have ignored a fresh plea to return to work by President Mikhail Gorbachev. The nationwide series of strikes are the most serious test yet for Mr Gorbachev's reform policy and there are fears it could threaten his ability to retain power. The striking miners continue to pack the central square of this Ukrainian town, pressing their demands for an improvement in pay and conditions. Many lie exhausted after days debating the strike action in front of the Communist Party's regional headquarters here. They are still refusing to return to work, saying that the concessions they have been offered are still not enough. The mood is one of defiance. A local party official who tried to talk with the miners was shouted off the stage. It was a symbol of how far the party's reputation in this part of Ukraine has plummeted. This is the largest coal-producing area in the Soviet Union, the strike causing extensive damage to the economy. Mid-morning, miners gathered around television sets, listening live to President Gorbachev's speech to the Supreme Soviet in Moscow. They know their action has caught the Kremlin leadership off guard. The miners watched, some silent and attentive, 
others too tired to care, as their local deputies argued their case in front of the Kremlin leadership. It's still unclear just when this, the worst industrial unrest since the early 1920s, will finally be overcome. With every day now, this crisis acquires a new momentum. Certainly for Mr Gorbachev, the miners' strike has brought a showdown with those, the Conservatives, who say he's going too far, too fast. The danger for him is that he's putting his authority on the line more and more. And if he doesn't get the miners back to work, then inevitably his credibility will suffer. Today, speaker after speaker said the miners were screaming out with despair. Nobody, they said, believed promises anymore. More ammunition here for those opponents of Gorbachev who say that he's losing control. India's opposition has resigned en masse, and they're demanding Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi do the same. The opposition, in a rare display of solidarity, claim a multi-million dollar arms scandal has discredited the government. The opposition claims Rajiv Gandhi paid almost $50 million in bribes to allow a Swedish company a lucrative arms deal in India back in 1986. The deal itself, they claim, was worth $1.4 million. All 106 members of India's 12 opposition parties have resigned over the alleged deal. The allegations are yet to be proved. They want Gandhi's resignation and an election. Gandhi has ruled that out. Despite the mass resignation, Gandhi's Congress party still holds an unassailable 544 parliamentary seats. The political crisis in Japan continues as the ruling Liberal Democrats look for a new leader. Prime Minister Uno resigned yesterday in the wake of his party's humiliating defeat at the polls and much publicised sex scandals. The opposition socialists are now promising to make political life more difficult by demanding an election in the powerful House of Representatives. If the socialists have their way, Japan could see its first female Prime Minister, socialist leader Tokakako Doi. Four months to the day after the Exxon Valdez ran aground in Prince William Sound, the Exxon company has made a startling decision. Its clean-up operation of the Alaska coastline will finish in September, even though the area is still caked in crude oil from the massive tanker leak. Exxon says the onset of the Arctic winter will make further work impossible. Melinda Ogden, National 9 News. The Australian stock market opened low this morning in line with overnight falls on Wall Street. The All Ordinaries is down just over two and a half points. Our dollar is rising. Ahead on National 9 Morning News, an American basketball legend defeated in Melbourne and still remembering Andy, the Bee Gees come home. Seven thirty Wednesday. I'm on my way. It's bottoms up to Australia's favourite team. I'll have the quiche Lorraine. Yeah. And I will have the bagel, thanks, Lorraine. The comedy company. The kids. Seven thirty Wednesday. Then at eight thirty. Admire your honesty. I admire your chest. The Golden Girls are on a manhunt. Wow, what a hump! I know. Eat your hearts out. And what a catch! I was going to ask you to marry. Me. Is this true love? Eight thirty Wednesday. every luxury motoring feature at your fingertips. Electronic overdrive, steering mounted audio controls, automatic temperature control air conditioning, cruise control, power mirrors, time delay power windows, and the security of a built-in alarm system. The new Magna Elite, a masterpiece of luxury in a class of its own. Magna Elite from Mitsubishi. It's our decor nicely. The personal service is terrific. I'm glad we decided on that dining suite. Trust Homemaker. We do. Homemaker is your home best store. 
When in Rich River Country, come stay and play at the Rich River Country Club Resort with 63 ultra-modern suites designed for comfort, convenience and luxury. Relax in the landscape gardens with two swimming pools, hot and cold spas, barbecues, hot tub, sauna and gymnasium. Built in the centre of the Rich River Golf Club's two 18-hole golf courses, there's also tennis and bowls facilities. Dine in the a la carte restaurant or try your luck on the pokies. Phone 054 824 for an information brochure and come stay and play with us. Australia won the battle to remain in the Davis Cup World Group next year when Wally Masur took the final singles rubber against Peru in Lima today. After Bad Light delayed the match for an extra day, Masur took only 40 minutes to take the final set 6-4 against Pablo Araya to wrap up the match and the tie. The largest crowd ever for a basketball match in this country gathered in Melbourne last night to watch the Aussie boomers down Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's travelling day Dells. In a tight second half, our national side just scraped home to take a 1-0 lead in the best of three series. A crowd of more than 15,000 packed the tennis centre and most were there to see the greatest basketballer in the world, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. His travelling day Dells were doing it fairly easy against the boomers during the first quarter. Into Gilmore. In the second term, the Americans had opened up a 13-point break, but the Australians started showing glimpses of their Olympic form to bridge the gap. By half-time, the tables were turned, and it was the Boomers who went into the break, holding a narrow lead. By this stage, it was clear the crowd wouldn't see Kareem at his best, but it didn't seem to matter all that much. The game itself was shaping up as a classic. In an action-packed second half, neither side could break away, but solo performances from Andrew Gaze, Phil Smythe and Luke Longley gave the Boomers a slight edge. This is the Gaze who muscles away McAdoo. With only seconds remaining, Kareem let fly with his famous skyhook, but it made no difference to the end result. The Boomers home by five points. Tony Jones, National 9 News. The Bee Gees are back on the road again, or they will be soon, and they're heading down under. The Australian tour is in memory of their youngest brother, Andy, who died last year. It's ten years since the Bee Gees last did a major tour. They haven't come back for the money, it's more a memorial get-together the tour where the three BGs were to become four. But the death of Andy, their youngest brother, last year put an end to those plans. Andy, when he was alive, uh, did waste a lot of his talent, didn't do things he ought to do, you know. We don't want to be in that situation. At every one of their sellout concerts, a song is dedicated to the memory of Andy. He was just 30 when he died. After a skyrocket ride to stardom, his career stalled. He became hooked on drugs and alcohol. Eventually, he died from heart disease. To this day, his brothers still think maybe they could have done more to help. They owe their multi-million dollar careers to those early days back in Australia where they got their start. They're returning later this year. It's going to be a tour full of memories of a younger brother who should have been here. Robert Penfold, National 9 News, London. A wedding anniversary with a difference in Canada for the Duke and Duchess of York. They're celebrating three years of marriage. They flew into the remote area of Saskatchewan to be greeted by a traditional Indian fish fry. There was also a local moose dish available. The Indians wished them well, crowning the Duke Big Chief Red Sunset. Then the Premier of the province and 7,000 locals presented them with a huge anniversary cake. In a moment, Margarita Vasilova with the national weather and thousands show their skills at a special convention. There's a very subtle difference between using a bar of soap at the basin and using soft wash on tap. Actually, the difference isn't that subtle. Soft wash on tap. Good for around 150 washes. Soft wash on tap. It keeps hands and bathrooms clean. How do you best judge celery? The stringiness of the stalk? The greenness of the leaf? Rosella know the best test is whether it's crisp or not. If it snaps, it's in. If it doesn't, it's out. 
Introducing the new Rosella Natural Choice Creamy Celery Soup. Soup so natural, it doesn't need artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. It's what we leave out that makes all the difference. Rosella. Australia, beautiful today, but what about tomorrow? What does she mean? The Carpet Giants are the biggest name in floor coverings. Why? Because they have the biggest in-stock range in Western Victoria. Because they stock high-performance floor coverings. Because of their range of quality vinyls. Because of their low prices. But most of all, because all their staff have total product knowledge. Able to recommend the right floor covering for your needs and budget. Check out this month's Best Buy. Berber Wool Blend Carpet. A large range of colours for a mere $49 per metre. You can't afford to miss it. Your best move? Check with the Carpet Giants first. Good morning, and southeastern Australia should enjoy a fine and sunny Tuesday and not too cold, with Hobart expecting a top four degrees higher than average for July. However, it was a cold morning in some places, with one degree recorded at 7am in Launceston, and it also got down to one at five o'clock in Adelaide this morning. Coastal regions in central eastern Australia are experiencing strong winds, and the Bureau has issued a strong wind warning between Fraser Island and Coolangatta, and a gale warning for the West Tasman Sea. The large area of clouds situated off the east coast is moving further eastwards and the showers in New South Wales and southern Queensland will contract to the east during the day. And the complex low off the New South Wales coast is directing the strong and moist southeasterly airflow over coastal regions. Now let's look at our forecast for the day. Perth, a fine Tuesday after some early fog with light winds and a top of 17 today. Adelaide, after a cold start to the day, it will be cool to mild with a top of 16 and mainly sunny. Melbourne will also see plenty of sunshine and stay fine with a top of 15 and light winds. Hobart can also expect a top of 15 with sunny periods and light to moderate north to northwesterly winds. Canberra will have mainly cloudy skies today, a cool top of 11 is forecast and it will be windy with moderate to gusty southeasterlies. There is a 10% chance of rain. And Sydney can expect a cold, showery and windy day with a top of 15 and fresh to strong south to southeasterly winds. For Brisbane, a dry, cool day with a top of 17 degrees and windy with fresh southwesterlies. And Townsville is looking at a fine day with a top of 23 and moderate south to southeasterlies. Cairns can look forward to a fine, sunny day with a maximum of 26 degrees, Darwin fine also, and 31 once again, becoming dry with moderate easterly winds, and Alice Springs, 21 degrees is forecast, and it will stay fine today. And now let's look briefly ahead to Wednesday's weather. Well, staying fine for Brisbane, Hobart and Adelaide and fine after morning fog in Melbourne and Canberra. Both will continue to have some showers, but in Sydney the showers will clear during the day. Have a good day and I'll see you again tomorrow. Tracy? Thanks, Margarita. And finally, from the American state of Maryland, the 42nd International Jugglers Convention. 5,000 people turned up to toss around a few ideas, including a banker who says he doesn't juggle the books. Best style points went to a man who could do everything except say, look ma, no hands. And there was the knife juggler who advises us not to do this in our own homes. Instead, he says, wait until you get to a friend's house. We're only kidding. That's the news for now. I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Good morning.